What's going on everybody? Welcome back. J-Rock here with you as always. Appreciate y'all for being here. And in this one, we're going to be talking about the PlayStation Fiesta Bowl featuring number 25 Oregon versus number 10 Iowa State. Well, let's go ahead and get into it. So, Iowa State's coming into this game as a four-point favorite. Uh, real quick, let's talk about the season that these two teams had, starting with Oregon. Uh, Oregon, a little bit of a disappointment this year. Uh, a lot of people uh, and themselves, you know, probably expected to go uh, undefeated uh, coming into the season. But they made some mistakes, had some turnovers uh, that cost them a couple of games. But hey, you know, then they find themselves in the Pac-12 championship. Uh, Washington originally supposed to be there, but not able to go due to COVID reasons. And the Pac-12 ends up selecting the Ducks to take their place. And hey, you know what? They go out there, they beat the Trojans and take care of business and uh, they're Pac-12 champs. So uh, pretty good. You know, things were seeming to trend uh, downwards and, and now it's uh, all of a sudden in an uptrend. And they also find themselves in a New Year's Six Bowl. So I, I think this team's pretty much feeling themselves right now. Uh, they're probably pretty excited uh, riding this wave. And I think they're going to come into this game with plenty of motivation. Uh, now, let's flip it over and look at uh, Iowa State's side of things. Of course, Iowa State with a couple of losses there. Uh, the most notable one that sticks out to a lot of people is Louisiana. Of course, which we know the Raging Cajuns are actually a pretty good team, especially considering how they finished out uh, the season down the stretch. But definitely a game Iowa State should have won. But, you know, hey, I don't hold it against them too much. Uh, definitely uh, worse teams out there that they could have lost to. Uh and, you know, and they also played in their respective uh, conference title game, losing a close one there, 27-21, to 21, to uh, Lincoln Riley and the, and the Sooners there. And even though Brock Purdy threw three interceptions, they were still in position to win that game, uh, you know, late there at the end. So now let's go ahead and uh, let's start looking at the stats and, and breaking things down for this game. Let's start on offense, and let's go with Oregon again first. Uh, the Ducks averaging 33.7 points and 429.7 yards per game uh, with an 86.36% red zone offense efficiency. And then Iowa State averaging 32.8 points and 441.1 yards per game with 84.78% red zone offense efficiency. Uh, of course, the Ducks are led out by quarterback Tyler Shook, uh, who's at 1,480 passing yards. Uh, 13 touchdowns, 5 uh, INTs on the season, as well as 263 rushing yards with two touchdowns. And then a quarterback for uh, the Cyclones, Brock Purdy, with 2,594 uh, passing yards, uh, 18 touchdowns, and 9 interceptions on the year. Also with 343 rushing yards with 4 rushing TDs. Yeah, these quarterbacks are similar uh, in quite a few ways. Uh, both have roughly about a two to one touchdown to interception ratio. Uh, you know, both can uh, run, uh, you know, to pick up yards and contribute on offense and, you know, also, you know, get a couple of scores. Uh, both averaging about close to the same thing as far as passing yards per game. Shuck with about 247 and Purdy. Uh, roughly at 236. So let's look at uh, Oregon. Uh, some more on offense as, as far as their other uh, players. Man, talk about a dual threat running back. Uh, Travis Dye, man, this guy can uh, run and catch it on you. 391 rushing yards and a score, averaging 7 yards per carry, as well as 221 reception yards and 4 scores, averaging 27.6 yards per catch. So, uh, you know, what a versatile guy uh, he is for them. Uh, you know, a fast, elusive back. And, you know, he's physical. Uh, good receiving option there, like I said, for the Ducks. And then looking at their actual receivers, uh, starting with wide receiver Johnny Johnson, uh, 226 yards and two scores. Uh, fast receiver, uh, good with the screen passes. They like to hit him out there, get him on the perimeter. And then uh, wide receiver Devin Williams, uh, who's uh, at 264 yards and two scores uh, on the year. A uh, big body guy, uh, you know, he's six foot five, uh, 205 pounds. You know, he can kind of, you know, he goes up there and, and gets those balls. I've actually seen him make some uh, some nice plays and uh, stuff this year. And man, how about this? 
This guy, as far as from the, you know, strictly from the wide receiver position, eighth in the nation in yards per reception with 20.3 is what he's averaging every time he catches it so uh that's pretty good there and of course you know there's speed all over this oregon team uh you know and on this offense of course you know that for a long time that's been oregon's big thing and, and i'll tell you when it comes to speed uh, this team's got plenty of it uh for sure i'll, I'll give them that now, flipping it over and looking at Iowa State's side of things, of course, the highlight of this offense, as well as this Iowa State team as a whole, has got to be the nation's second leading rusher, running back Bryce Hall, who comes in with 1,436 uh, yards on the ground and 19 uh, rushing touchdowns. You know, what a tough physical back. You know, he's hard to tackle, gets around the edge well, and can uh, get north and south on you for sure. Uh, you know, and I'm really uh, excited to see him in this game. And yeah, I think he's going to be a big factor in this one, uh, in my opinion. Uh, looking at uh, the Cyclones receiving options, uh, wide receiver Xavier Hutchinson, uh, 726 yards, four scores on the year. Uh, another tall receiver uh, who can go up and, uh, you know, get those 50-50 uh, those type balls, uh, you know, a vertical uh, you know, threat there for them. And man, we got to talk about the big old physical tight end, uh, Charlie Kohler, uh, who comes in with 538 yards and six scores on the year. And yeah, this is a, this is a big boy, uh, six foot six, 257 pounds. And you know, he could, uh, well, not could, he, he, he is, uh, he's going to pose a mismatch uh, for that Oregon defense with their cornerbacks and their linebackers. Uh, trying to cover him and I think I, I think Iowa State knows this so I would not be surprised at all if they try to get him um, you know really involved uh, into this passing attack uh, so definitely look for that but you know flipping back over to the Oregon side of things you know Devin Williams uh, like I said you know with him being a bigger type receiver I think uh, I think he's a kind of a mismatch too uh, for Iowa State's secondary uh, their cornerbacks and I think both of these defenses are, are going to be tested uh, in this game uh, by, you know, uh, by, uh, you know, each other's offense. <clears throat> of course, you know, neither one of these teams are juggernauts uh, defensively, but both defenses can do enough to help their team win to, to get some stops. Um, but, you know, I think I'd have to give the slight edge uh, defensively, uh, you know, to Iowa State. Uh, you know, but, you know, don't get me wrong, I mean, uh, Oregon, uh, definitely a scrappy defense and uh, can definitely force some turnovers. Uh, so let's kind of look at them defensively. Uh, a couple of key players on that side of the ball for them. Safety, Jamal Hill, uh, with 16 tackles, four pass deflections, and two interceptions. And then linebacker, Noah Sewell, 37 tackles, two sacks, and a forced fumble. Of course, Oregon's defense ranked 69th uh, nationally in yards per game allowed. Now, flipping over, looking at Iowa State's defense, uh, a couple of key guys for them. Defensive end, Will McDonald, the team's sack leader with nine and a half. Also, two forced fumbles. And then linebacker Mike Rose, uh, who, who, who was both the tackle and the interceptions leader for them with 90 tackles and four INTs. And like I said, you're definitely going to need guys like that that can get out there and tackle. Because I think that's going to be the challenge, uh, you know, for... Iowa State on defense is just, you know, being able to tackle out in space. And look, you know, they got to stay in front of, of this Oregon team because, you know, if you let them, I mean, they, these guys will run on you like it's a track meet, uh, you know, and they can definitely burn you. So, you know, don't want to don't want to allow that. You want to want to try to avoid that. Um, but which I still expect, you know, both of these offenses to get theirs. I mean, it's just it's just the point that we're at now in college football. Uh, but, you know. Uh, but I definitely think at some point one of these defenses is going to make a play when it needs to. And I kind of tend to think that that's probably uh, going to be uh, Iowa State. And, of course, Iowa State uh, defensively is ranked 27th in the nation in yards uh, per game allowed. So an advantage there uh, for them over the Ducks. But like I said, I think this is going to be... Uh, I think this is going to be a, a tough, close, uh, physical game. Uh, like I said, there will be offense in this game. Uh, you know, I wouldn't say it's going to be, you know, uh, 
over, you know, 70 point uh, or maybe 80 points or something like that. It's not going to be anything too ridiculous, uh, but there will be some points scored. I mean, of course, I don't foresee it being like a 17 to 10 type deal, of course, or anything like that. Because uh, like I said, b both of these offenses are, are going to get production. Um, but, you know, like I said, I give the defensive edge to Iowa State. And I may also give a physicality edge uh, to Iowa State, which is ultimately the reasons why uh, I'm going to pick them to win this game. And look, like I said, going back to Brees Hall, I just think he's going to be a, a key factor in this game. And he may be the, the, uh, the deciding factor, uh, in my opinion. Uh, because, you know, I think this one's going to be close, but, you know, getting close to the end of the game, late in the game, I think they're going to lean more uh, on Hall in the running game uh, to wear down this Oregon defense, uh, you know, get them gassed, hands on the hips. That way they can go ahead and drive the nail in the coffin. Uh, and that's kind of how I see that playing out. Uh, so I'm going to... Uh, take Iowa State here, and I'm going to take them to cover, and I'm predicting a score of Iowa State 34, Oregon 28. So give me the Cyclones in this one, and give uh, give me those points with it as well uh, to cover uh, the spread. But like I said, definitely going to be a close game, going to be a fun game. Definitely ready for this one. But that's all I've got, guys. Please comment down below. Let me know what you guys think, what your score predictions are. I appreciate you uh, stopping by and taking the time to watch this. Uh, if you would, please consider subscribing uh, if you haven't already. And also, uh, if you would, uh, whatever platform you're on, uh, yeah, Facebook, Twitter, whatever, uh, please share this. Get this out there. I'm really trying to get the, con uh, the content out there and spread the channel. I would greatly appreciate it. It would help me out a lot. Uh, also, hit the thumbs up button down below uh, if you like the content. All right, guys. Like I said, again, I appreciate you stopping by and being here. This is all I got for now. But I will see you guys again very soon. But until then, this is J-Rock saying peace and God bless.